Jesus is King. Welcome back to another edition of the St. Joseph Dialogos with co-host Mr. Fowler from Canon211.locals.com. No. And we have with us in the show tonight, Mr. Chris Plants, the expositor of Christ the King as the essence of the gospel. Chris, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great. I'm doing We great. missed you last time. It wasn't the same without you. I know. I'm you, sorry. You were just you were working on Christendom in the city of the angels. Yep. And yeah. uh you're starting a you're starting a Catholic political party. Yeah, I've got a so, we can I join. So we have the um uh we have the logo already done. Um have I shown it to you guys yet? That's the most important part. You gotta have the logo. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, not so, publicly. You showed it to us privately, to me. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I we're not kind of doing a we're not doing a big rollout right now, but we um, we have shared it publicly. Um, and let's see here. Yeah, um, we have we have finalized the logo. Uh, Sweet. I, I don't know how, but but, you, but yeah, it's um. You told us the name. You, you, the name has been shared publicly, so I can say that publicly. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Cristero it's the party, Cristero party. Everybody. It's the Cristero yeah. party. I mean, yeah, it's they the mean party. Business. And they mean business. Viva Cristo Rey and all that good stuff. Okay, viva. Yeah, exactly. So we, so we, we, um, we ended up partnering with this awesome Catholic company that um, does heroic strategies. That does a lot of uh, marketing and web design and all that biz, all that jazz for. Uh, Catholic organizations, non-Catholic organizations. And so a lot of them are kind of plugged into the new polity group, if you guys know of them. Yeah. And so they get like this whole, there is no neutral public square that Christ needs to reign as king. Anti-liberalism. So, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. So they really like they really liked it. And um uh actually the one one of the main guys ended up passing away. Um and so, know. but we ended up continuing partnering and, uh, they're doing the website the website should be up maybe in the next month or two, a basic website laying out, you know, the, the party platform and our basic argument, uh, for a Catholic political party here in the United States. And it's much bigger than the United States. So we are, we do plan over the next hundred years or so to expand to all 50 States. And then hopefully have all 50 states recognizing Christ as king within the next 250 years. There we go. And then, Let's do it. Deus vault. Yeah. There we go. And then as we progress, we will get, we'll go, we'll, we'll get to Mexico pretty soon. Uh, before we even get to the 50 states, we'll get to Mexico. Um, can, places can, in I, Europe. I'll drink to that. Like, can we just drink to that right now? Here, here. Yeah. Raise Jesus your coffee, is Chris. king, everybody. Here you go. I, I let's just before we get ahead of ourselves, get into the meat of the presentation. Yeah, and I'm so excited for that. Just want to remind everybody this is a preview because the public portion it will be sent out right now. This is private, only a guild members and Patreon subscribers. But if you want the full conversation, you have to chip in something to support these fine Catholic gentlemen, Mr. Fowler or Mr. Chris Plants, or you can even donate to the other members of the Ratzinger party who. Could not make it, and especially uh, Mr. Richard DeClue. You know, I got you got to tell uh, Bishop Barron that his books just smell good. They just have a great smell. Thank you, Bishop Barron, Damn. for your good smelling books. They also they that's also a, look. That's good. a very keen compliment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's important to you, me sir. that a book smells good. But in all seriousness, I want to I want to say this is this is big a big part of our. Uh, our apostolate here at Mean of Catholic, which is dedicated to Our Lady of Victory, which is her feast day today. So I'm really excited that we're doing this show on her feast day. And this is our lay apostolate constitution. And this is all that what we do here at Mean of Catholic. We are a guild community, first and foremost. We're not trying to just be a YouTube channel. We want to connect with Catholics, pious Catholics, internationally we want to utilize this evil thing called the internet and bring good out of this evil and that is getting connected with uh pious catholics throughout the world and the part the thing that it chris's presentation that i'm looking forward to uh that reminded me of this part of the constitution which is to recover 
the Christian lay nobility. We hope through these efforts to reclaim the critical doctrine of two swords to properly build Christendom in souls and societies. And this refers to the fact that nobility was born out of necessity and emergency. When the Vikings are invading, well, somebody just says, get your swords and let's go. It, it, we, don't, we don't worry about all the necessity, necessary nuances, which are important, but when there's an emergency, we just have to fight for Christ the King and restore something of Jesus as King so that we can pass down the faith. And uh, so I'm really excited because that's what Meaning of Catholic is all about, is, is about working for this lay apostolate. And by the way, this is what Vatican II talked all about, is the lay apostolate. And this is something that we... We, we read the document, Axiosum uh, uh, Authoritatum. Is it Authoritatum? Axiositatum. Thank you. Axiositatum. Apostolicam Axiositatum. It's a fantastic document that gets so little love, unfortunately, uh, from Vatican II. Anyhow, so I just wanted to note that and uh, encourage everyone please subscribe to one of our channels to get the full story because. We want you to invest in something to tell us that you want to be a part of this because we want to connect with pious Catholics who really are serious. We really want to get involved with this whole movement, like the things like the Cristero party. So with that, there was some homework that we, what, uh, we had to sign, which was Joseph Ratzinger truth and tradition or truth and toleration rather. So Chris plants, Take it away whenever you're ready, wherever you want to go with this. You've read a lot of Joseph Grassiger. Where do you want to go with Catholic political parties? Go. Okay. Yeah. So um, just uh, um, to fill in just a little bit. Uh, so I came to this whole Catholic political party, crisis king kind of thing from a little bit of a different route than everyone else seems to be kind of coming around. So they, there's the post-liberal order. There are people that are like, hey, the 19th century popes said stuff about liberalism not being okay, Gallicanism not being okay, all these other things that were condemned. What do we really do with it? How should we approach this? For me, I came about this from the Bible. Okay, so I just, I'm mainly like a Bible nerd, although I, I love Catholic theology. But there's this rise in what's called empire studies in the New Testament, and it's a group of scholars. The society of biblical literature has like a whole section dedicated to it every year where many scholars are like, are pointing out that, uh, the new Testament is pretty politically subversive, like not even pretty political. Like it's all about subverting the Roman empire and setting up God's kingdom on earth as in heaven. Cue the, our father prayer. So, um, so that's how I got into this. I got into this mainly from reading scripture, conversations with Scott Hahn and others being like, am I tracking this right? You know, reading some specific scholars and sort of recognizing, wait, the main charisma here is that Jesus is Lord. And the main direction of the New Testament is about, is the, is, is going in the direction of God's kingdom has arrived in the person and work of Jesus Christ. And that person and work has extended in time and space through his church. And, um, and so I'm, I'm kind of like, I haven't dealt really with, uh, a whole lot of like, what have John, what, what, what was John Paul II saying? What was Benedict saying Pope or Ratzinger saying about this specific topic until recently conversations with Dom and others. And I'm like, you know what? I should really see what's going on with say Ratzinger's political theology. Flanders, you sent me, you sent me that line from Ratzinger's, uh, the trilogy, his infancy narr uh, was it the infancy narrative? No, it was the Holy Week, where Ratzinger <laughs> said, you know, made the line where it was like the whole purpose was to separate. Uh, I can't remember the exact line. I don't want to botch yeah. it, but I was kind yeah. of taken back, like, you know, okay, um, and. You know, many things that I've read of Ratzinger, I'm I'm like, you know, we might have maybe a different take on some specific passages here or there in the New Testament. Um, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to dive into Ratzinger and just kind of hear him out. Um, and I've read some secondary sources about Ratzinger's politics. 
And, you know, checking with DeClue and checking with others that are experts in this field of Ratzinger's theology, it's sort of unanimous that he's kind of difficult to pin down. And so, you know, what I'm offering here is just, um, what if we, what if we kind of read Ratzinger as if he were, uh, would he, would he endorse a Catholic political party or would he not? Like, what would he, what would he think about what we're trying to do with the Cristera party? Would he favor something much more, uh, much more like try to purify the Democrat or Republican party? Would he say, Hey, let's go more for the kind of a little bit more Christian. Let's get all the Christians together, but then let's like not mention Christ's name, but like, let's take all of his teachings, like the solidarity party. Or would he go for like, Hey, you can't get the roots without the fruits, which is the lecture, you know, one of his, his lecture they gave to parliament, which is like, you can't expect to get all these Christian morals without Christ himself. Okay. So where would he land on that? So I've just been reading Ratzinger recently um, a couple books I'd recommend before we begin values in a time of upheaval is not a book like people recommend a whole lot or, or know that he wrote, but it's actually really good. Um, and so I would, I would highlight it. I, I don't even know. I, I'm pretty sure it's still in print, but you should try to go get it, uh, published in 2005. And, you know, you see the first chapter is politics and politics and morality, and it's really good. Um, I might do a review on my channel where we can maybe set up something we do together um, as an analysis of that book. And that book, I think, is where he gets into great detail. And and in a way, I'd like to engage him on that uh, more later on. But what I have instead is a book that you recommended earlier, Truth and Tolerance. And uh, it's Christian. The subtitle is Christian Belief and World Religions. And I, I just was like, you know what, I'm going to get more into Ratzinger because I'm friend with the clue. I'm part of this Ratzinger group with you guys. I also, you know, the, I've the, had the Ratzinger, Ratzinger party, we call it prost. Rats, Ratzinger party but, toast. Do, you, do, you, do Germans roll ours? Important question. The Germans roll ours? Do you say like prost? It's sort of a, yeah, it's prost. sort of a, a rolled ours, like prost, like that. Prost. Yeah. Okay, prost. Yeah, that, and that good. means like cheers something exactly exactly cheers. okay all right, all right sorry continue important important um side note yeah so the ratzinger party has been great you know we've been talking about ratzinger in the telegram um i've had conversations with dom um about ratzinger and then of course de clue is the expert really on uh ratzinger so i've kind of been pitching questions to him over the years about ratzinger so but as I read Ratzinger, I see Ratzinger, yes, he has said things uh, that would point in the opposite direction of a Christian political party or Catholic political party in the way that I'm presenting it. But um, but there are some things that he says, there are a lot of things that he says that it's hard to argue that he would he would not support the kind of thing that we're doing with the Cristero party. Um so so let me let me just try to give my pitch of chapter two of this book. And let me just lay out the argument as I see it and then draw some conclusions that sort of point in the direction that I'm taking this whole thing about Catholicism in the public square. So in chapter two on pages 138 to 139, the first thing that I would like sort of to point out to everyone is that Ratzinger is, I think we tend to read Ratzinger as if he's 